if the mind of God contains an infinite source of bliss, then if we're thinking about the nature of uh, blissful human experiences, and I thought, why not think in terms of one of the most attractive of all blissful experiences, namely the the orgasm, um, how would that relate to the mind of God? Well, the the standard theory would say, well, it's evolved to serve reproductive physiology and uh, because of short circuits in the brain or neurotransmitters or serotonin release or something in the thalamus or the limbic system or wherever. Well, that may be true. It probably is. Um, But it doesn't explain the subjective experience. And so that's not explained at all by anything in mechanistic science. What if, at the moment of orgasm, there's a kind of opening, a temporary opening of a kind of window into the divine bliss? Then we're drawn towards the mind of God. The mind of God attracts us uh, through not just orgasms, but any pleasurable or or, uh, attractive phenomenon. Ultimately, uh, these are connections with the mind of God. I think that the interesting thing about this you see is traditional theologies in in the west and elsewhere and and indeed in greek philosophy uh, god works in the world according to aristotle which is pre-christian of course and according to christian theologies and according to other theologies by being attractive god doesn't push the world from behind like a steam engine god pulls the world from the future Uh, We're attracted, we're drawn towards the divine. God is the prime mover of the universe in in the medieval cosmology, not by pushing it, but by pulling it. The whole universe is striving to uh, uh, get closer to God. And how this reflects itself in human life is the otherwise inexplicable strivings that humans have for truth and beauty and goodness. And these have propelled human beings or drawn human beings uh, for a very long time. This precedes Christianity, of course. And interestingly, even some of my um, atheist colleagues, uh, the reason they don't believe in the kind of God they've rejected is because they believe in truth. And they think truth is the most important goal. Well, I do too. Um, But the fact they're so drawn to truth... uh, to to such a position that they become, some of them, fanatical atheists, they do so because of a devotion to truth. It's a kind of unconscious devotion to this divine principle. Some people are irresistibly drawn to beauty. We all are, to some degree, and so are animals. When you hear a beautiful bird song, when you look at the way animals are drawn to flowers and to fruits... Um, And, again, one can see that as being drawn by the divine. And goodness... Uh, being drawn towards selfless service to being drawn towards doing the right thing, again, is a basic human need. We find it in all societies, various forms of altruism, which go way beyond the needs of just surviving yourself or helping your kids to survive. Uh, There's a kind of drive seen and recognised in all human cultures of uh, a pull towards uh, goodness. Now, I think these are ways in which the divine mind works in our lives, whether we're aware of it or not.